The province of New Brunswick has now passed Bill 63, which will effectively ban all flavored vape products across the province. During the reading of Bill 17, which was later tabled as Bill 63, several members of the Legislative Assembly gave speeches regarding vaping that were incredibly inaccurate. Today, we're going to break down what was said during the Health Minister of New Brunswick's reading and compare it to the real facts about vaping. Starting off the reading for Bill 17, Health Minister Dorothy Shepard opens the reading with the following. E-cigarettes irritate the lungs. It may cause serious lung damage, and it can lead to smoking cigarettes and other forms of tobacco use. And it can also increase the risk of other types of addictions later in life. So it's pretty clear where New Brunswick stands on the vape debate. It's interesting that with vaping being around for over a decade, there has been no evidence of lung damage or illness from vaping. On top of that, looking at a study done by Dr. Ricardo Palasso, a number of never smokers were monitored for lung health after daily vaping. The study resulted in no development of respiratory symptoms, changes in markers of lung inflammation in exhaled air, or findings of early lung damage. Now in regards to the age-old myth of vaping leads to smoking, there's no evidence to really back this up. If this theory were true, we would have seen spikes in smoking rates among 20-year-olds that were teenagers in the peak of youth vaping. However, in reality, smoking rates among all age groups continue to decline, and vaping plays a big role in that. Health Minister Dorothy Shepard didn't stop there. Metals like lead, chromium, nickel, copper, aluminum, and mercury. Exposure can have, very neg have a variety of negative health effects, including brain damage and cancer. And flavoring with chemicals like diacetyl, which can damage the lungs when inhaled, has been found in many sweet e-juice flavors, such as vanilla. And sometimes, carbonyls like formaldehyde, which potentially cause cancer. E-liquid only contains four ingredients, vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, your necessary flavorings, and nicotine. Based on standards for workplace exposure to inhaled chemicals and metals, scientists can estimate whether there are toxic elements present in secondhand vapor and at what levels. Through the decade of research done on vaping, there is no evidence stating that secondhand vapor is a threat to the health of bystanders. Aside from propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin, which are the two ingredients that make up the base of all e-liquids, the data shows that the exhaled vapor doesn't contain high levels of, really, anything. Drexel University toxicologist Igor Burstyn stated that while the contents of e-cig vapor inhaled by users quote, justifies surveillance, there is so little contamination in exhaled vapor that there is unlikely to be any risk for bystanders. Vaping is also not linked to any form of cancer, heart disease, or asthma. Studies actually show that smokers with asthma and COPD that switch to vaping reduce their symptom severity, so the exact opposite of what the health minister said. The myth of toxic metals in vapor stems from an early 2018 study by Hopkins University, which has been debunked. Researchers conducting this test were misusing the devices, operating them at power levels far higher than meant to be used. In realistic day-to-day -day usage, the user would have to vape over 10 times the amount in order to achieve anywhere near the levels of metals they found in that study, which is pretty much impossible. Touching on the formaldehyde claim, this stems from a study done by the New England Journal of Medicine. Similar to the toxic metals study, the researchers were operating these devices at extremely high power levels, more than the coil within the device could handle. This then created combustion with the cotton, essentially creating smoke that a vapor would not be able to inhale. The results from these studies were achieved through unrealistic measures and do not reflect normal day-to-day -day vaping. E-cigarette marketing, including product design and packaging, appeal to a young audience. For example, many e-cigarettes feature bright colors and fruit, candy, alcohol, or other flavors that youth find attractive and interesting. But the fact is, many e-cigarettes are made by the same companies that produce regular cigarettes. Their marketing targets young people by making fun flavors for e-cigarettes and showing young, healthy people vaping. They're trying to make youth into lifetime customers. Marketing and advertising of conventional tobacco products like cigarettes are proven to cause youth to use tobacco products. 
Now in regards to youth vaping, the federal government has already implemented legislation that prohibits advertising where youth are present. Lifestyle marketing, cartoons, animals, and caricatures are all prohibited on both packaging and advertising. It is also illegal to name a product after a candy, dessert, soft drink, or energy drink. In short, there is no way for the youth to know what the flavor is. While it is true that some vape products are made by tobacco companies, that does not represent the entire industry. The vape industry was founded by ex-smokers that used vaping to quit smoking. The independent vape industry is made up of small, family-run businesses all with one main goal in mind, to help people quit smoking. And this independent vape industry needs flavors to stay in business where tobacco-owned brands rely on nicotine content and convenience. Banning flavors will actually help tobacco companies as banning flavors will just eliminate their small business competition. And it doesn't stop there. Yale researcher Abigail Friedman found that in San Francisco, which was an early adopter of flavor bans, the odds of youth smoking has doubled since the flavor bans first took place. As stated earlier in regards to vaping being a gateway to smoking, there is no evidence of this. Youth and smoking rates are at historic lows and continue to decline and vaping plays a big role in that. While this seems like quite a lot of information to take in, this is only one section of the reading of Bill 17 in New Brunswick. As the readings go on, we'll be keeping a close eye on how vaping is being represented and create more videos like this to help spread the real facts on vaping.